We're now going to look at what we can do when our assumption includes a statement with a universal quantifier. To make use of assumptions containing universal quantifiers, we need to use what's known as the principle of universal instantiation. Let's see how this works. Suppose we've assumed a statement that says something like, for all x in the real numbers, some statement about x is true. The question is, what information can we get from this? The answer to that is that we can get a lot of information from this statement. We can get a unique piece of information for every real number that we know of. Because this statement is saying p of x holds for every real number, that tells us that it holds for every real number that we know of. In other words, it holds for 1, it holds for 2, it holds for 0, negative 1, any real number you can think of. And so an assumption like this allows us to do much more than simply talk about an arbitrary unknown value of x. It allows us to talk about whatever specific value or values we choose to assign to x. We could, for example, say, since 1 is a real number, p of 1 is true. And since 0 is a real number, p of 0 is true. And we can go on like this. The only limit is how many real numbers we know about. However, the difficulty with an assumption like this is knowing what specific real numbers we want to talk about, because we need to choose specific real numbers that are going to be useful to us in our proof. It's also worth mentioning that it is not logically valid to speak about x as an arbitrary real number. Whatever we do with this assumption, it needs to be applied to specific real numbers that we know about. In other words, we could not just say, let x be a real number, therefore p of x. We have to talk about specific real numbers. To see how this works, let's look at an example. In this example, we're going to prove for all values of x in the real numbers, if for all a in the real numbers, a times x is less than or equal to a, then x must be equal to 1. Let's start the proof. First, since we're proving this is true for all real numbers x, we need to let x be an arbitrary real number. Next, since we're proving a conditional statement, if we're using a direct proof, we need to assume the full antecedent of this statement, which is, for all a in the real numbers, a times x is less than or equal to a. From this, we need to try to demonstrate that x is equal to 1. Now, since our assumption contains a universal quantifier, we need to use the principle of universal instantiation. This means we need to choose to talk about a specific value of a, or if we want, multiple specific values of a. Because we're given that the inequality a times x is less than or equal to a holds for every real number we know of. Since we're trying to prove that x is equal to 1, it might make sense to talk about the real number 1. We can say, since 1 is a real number, and our assumption holds for all real numbers, then it must hold for 1. In other words, since 1 is a real number, we know that 1 times x is less than or equal to 1. This gives us the inequality x is less than or equal to 1. Now this information is relevant because we're trying to prove x is equal to 1, and in a sense, this inequality gets us halfway there. But we still have work to do. We now have to eliminate the possibility that x is less than 1. But remember, there is still more information contained in our assumption than what we've used to this point. We've only used the fact that our assumption is true for the number 1, when we actually know that it's true for all real numbers. For example, we could also use the fact that our assumption holds for the number negative 1. We can say since negative 1 is a real number, negative 1 times x must be less than or equal to negative 1. This gives us the inequality negative x is less than or equal to negative 1. If we now multiply this inequality by negative 1 on both sides, which will switch the direction of the inequality, we get 1 is less than or equal to x. We now have two inequalities, the first saying x is less than or equal to 1, and the second saying 1 is less than or equal to x. The only way that both of these can hold is if x is equal to 1. In other words, the first inequality tells us that x is not greater than 1, and the second inequality tells us that x is not less than 1. By trichotomy, the only possibility left Left is that x is equal to 1. Looking at this example, we see that the principle of universal generalization allows us to choose any value of a that we want to talk about, and we can even apply it to multiple values of a. However, what we need to be concerned about is choosing specific values of a that are going to give us relevant information that we need to demonstrate whatever we're trying to demonstrate. Let's look at another example. 
In this example, we're going to prove a fairly complicated looking statement. The statement is, for all values of x and y in the real numbers, if for all values of a in the real numbers, if x is less than or equal to a, then y is less than or equal to a, then y is less than or equal to x. To begin the proof, since this is a statement for all values of x and y in the real numbers, we're going to start by introducing arbitrary constants x and y into our proof. From here we see that we have a conditional statement with a fairly complicated antecedent and a fairly simple consequent. Using a direct proof, we assume the full antecedent of this statement. In other words, we assume the statement for all a in the real numbers, if x is less than or equal to a, then y is less than or equal to a. From here, we're required to demonstrate that y is less than or equal to x. Since our assumption contains a universal quantifier, we need to use the principle of universal instantiation. This means we need to choose to talk about a specific value or specific values of a that will hopefully give us the information that we need. In this case, whatever value of a we choose to talk about, the statement from our assumption will tell us if the value of a we chose is greater than or equal to x, then the value of a that we chose will be greater than or equal to y. The trouble here is that in order to use this assumption, we need to ensure that whatever value of a we choose is greater than or equal to x, otherwise our assumption tells us nothing, because our assumption is only telling us what happens in the case where the value of a we chose is greater than or equal to x. Assuming we can think of a value of a that we know is greater than or equal to x, our assumption will then tell us that that same value is greater than or equal to y. Now, if we look at what we're trying to demonstrate, we're trying to demonstrate that x is greater than or equal to y. And so this might suggest that a good value of a to choose to talk about might be x, because after all, it says if we know that x is greater than or equal to x, which we do, then our assumption will allow us to conclude that x is greater than or equal to y, which is exactly what we're looking for. And this is exactly how this demonstration can work. Applying the principle of universal instantiation, we can say since x is a real number and x is greater than or equal to x, our assumption tells us that x must also be greater than or equal to y. And this gives us exactly the conclusion that we need.